We're going to look at the presidency of John Adams. So backing up, as we've talked about, Washington was the president for two terms. Could have run a third term. He could have run in 1796. There was nothing in the Constitution preventing that. But he felt if he won again, it would be four more years. He would begin to maybe be viewed as a king. And we know how they felt about kings back then. So 1796, we're going to get a second president. And this was somewhat of a big deal because all people had known was Washington as president. And obviously what the chart shows us, John Adams is going to be that person. So election of 1796, who ran the two main people were Adams versus Jefferson. Adams was a Federalist, and of course, Jefferson is a Republican. We've spoken about him. So Adams wins where we have some issues perhaps as we have a Federalist president and a Republican vice president. Remember, back then, second place gets you the vice presidency. So in previous elections, it hadn't been a big deal. 1789, they didn't have political parties. 1792, they're both Federalist. This suddenly becomes a big deal. The modern day equivalent would be Joe Biden as president and Donald Trump as the VP which I don't think anyone would like to see. They didn't want to see this, though. So the system of the second place candidate and election becoming vice president led to tension between Adams and Jefferson, and it will lead to changes in the future. So some background on John Adams, because we haven't spoken much about him. From Massachusetts, went to Harvard during colonial times. Um, he was around Boston, Boston Tea Party, Boston Massacre. He never took part in these things, but he was... A founding father and he was kind of in the center of all of it he was also a lawyer member of the first and second second continental congress signed the declaration um, after that he worked for the american government overseas in france holland and britain because he was overseas he never signed the constitution vice president under washington and like washington he was a federalist so some background and this is important for um, the notes that you're going to take it says when Washington became president, Britain and France were at war together. During this time period, they were constantly at war with one another. France, though, was bugging the United States. They want the United States to join the, the war, fight on their side against the British. George Washington wanted nothing to do with it and stayed out of it. Adams becomes president, and there was a, there was a change. There was an incident. It was called the X Y Z affair. I'll talk about it next unit. Anyway, as a result of this incident. A lot of people are mad at France. And now people are saying we need to go to war, not with the French. This should say against the French. A lot of people were calling on Adams to declare war against the French. And as America moved slightly closer to war with, French, with the French, Adams made some decisions. He made these decisions because he's saying he wants to keep the country safe, but he also wanted to go after his political enemies, which were the Republicans. So a couple of laws are going to be passed, the Alien and Sedition Acts, and we'll discuss those. Don't worry if you were absent. Don't worry about the Ed Puzzle. Okay, remember this as we talk through both of these laws. The main purpose behind these laws was to go after the Republicans. He was a Federalist. He wants to make life difficult for the Republicans. So the first question is, what is an alien? Don't, whatever pops in your head, it's probably not the correct answer. An alien are, are people living in the United States who are not citizens of the United States. The government still uses this term. The term that we're more familiar with is an alien is an immigrant. It's someone that has moved, lives and works in the United States, but has not become a citizen of the United States. So there were, um, well, let me talk about this. It says many people living in the United States were from France. Many, including Adams, were worried that these French immigrants would not be loyal to the United States if we went to war with France. So it would be like today, if in three years now, if we went to war with Russia, there's a lot of Russians living in the United States. Some people might think that those Russians living in the United States aren't going to be loyal or whatever, and that would be the thinking. So he passes the Alien Act, two parts. Number one says if an immigrant wants to become a citizen, it would now take 14 years instead of five. So when people immigrate to the United States, they don't have to become a citizen. There's nothing say, nothing says they have to. Many decide to because they want to vote. If they're going to live here and spend the rest of their lives here, they want to participate in kind of the political system. They want to vote. 
So before this, you had to live in the United States for five years before you could become a citizen. Adams is now saying it's going to take 14 years to become a citizen. I'll talk about that in a second. The second part was the president could imprison or deport. Deport means to send back any alien immigrant he thought was dangerous. So the analogy I use now is Adams has a bunch of cards in his pocket that say, I can kick you out of the country. And he's going to use some of these. His whole thing, though, is with both of these, is most immigrants voted Republican. So if Adams is a Federalist, he doesn't want them voting. So now he kind of has two tools in his pocket to keep them from voting. First tool is it's going to take a lot longer to become a citizen, so those folks aren't going to get to vote. And then the second tool he has in his pocket is he can just kick them out of the country, and obviously they cannot vote. So this is the act that I think is maybe a little bit more important, a little bit more relevant. Sedition, you're familiar with the idea of it. Sedition means, or sedition is an act which attempts to overthrow the government. Um, a lot of times we use other words for this, rebellion, revolution, insurrection would be an, another word. So what the Sedition Act did, it made it a crime to write or say anything that was hateful or untrue about the government. So when we first hear this, we stop and think, wow, this violates some of our First Amendment rights. First Amendment says we have freedom of speech as long as it's not a threat or creates a dangerous situation. And the second, uh, or the First Amendment also says we have freedom of press. We can publish stories in the newspaper. So now it's a crime to write or say anything that was hateful or untrue about the government. That looks like it violates the First Amendment. So if I were to say John Adams is the biggest idiot ever, could that be hateful? Yes. Is it a threat? No. Does it create a dangerous situation? No. But I, now, under this law, I could still go to jail. And Adams was doing this to punish Republican newspaper editors who were saying hateful things about Adams in the paper. A lot of the papers were blasting John Adams for his decisions. And he got sick of hearing about it. He got sick of reading about it. So he's now making it a crime to do this. Again, to most people, it looks like it violates the First Amendment. So the Republicans obviously were upset. They're going to argue it was a violation of the First Amendment, freedom of speech and freedom of press. And I think they have a pretty good case on this. So what they begin to do, a lot of these Republicans begin to argue that the national government was abusing its power with the Sedition and the Alien Acts, and they wanted to nullify the laws. So they're, the Republicans are now kind of taking it to the next step. Nullify means to refuse to recognize or follow a national law. And this is when it becomes a big deal because Congress and the president have the ability to pass laws. And when they do that, everyone has to follow them. Now Republicans are saying, no, the government's abusing its power, so we don't have to follow that law. And they're going to believe in something called state's doctrine. And this concept is going to look familiar. State's doctrine, it's basically the Tenth Amendment. It restates that powers not given to the national government go to the state. So they're going to argue... There's nothing in the Constitution that says anything about nullifying. So therefore, because the national government can't nullify, the states can nullify, and they can choose not to follow these laws. In the end, to wrap up, only two states agreed to nullify these laws, and they were Kentucky and Virginia.